Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. Hope you guys are having a great day. Today we are starting off in the village which we have successfully roped off from invaders in the last episode and these guys are thriving. I have not done a great deal here to be honest. I have just stuck around and seen what they do in their day-to-day -day activities which is not much. However, that is about to change because we have a future update coming to villagers. The 1.14 update or the village and pillage update is actually going to make some changes to the way villagers work which is why I thought it was important to cover these guys now because everything is about to change or at least everything is supposed to be changing I'm not entirely certain what the plans are for that yet Mojang have not released any kind of details about exactly how they're going to change villager AI and things like that but I have my theories and I feel like it's probably not worth doing too much more with these guys until we know what's in store for the future of villages. So I'm actually probably going to leave this village for now. I might come back here anytime I need to trade some, some stuff, some emeralds and some resources for emeralds and all that good stuff. We, we, need, uh, we need to revisit our friend the librarian here a couple of times because he's got some good books. But... I think we're going to take a slightly different track today and look at something that I was able to acquire from one of the toolsmiths in this village in a previous episode, and that is my Silk Touch shovel. Now, this might not be worth dedicating an entire episode to, but we will see, because Silk Touch is actually my very favorite enchantment in the game, because, oh, if I can get over this fence, whoop, there we go. Because Silk Touch allows you to acquire blocks that you would not normally be able to acquire. Take grass here as an example. Normally when you har harvest grass, you start off punching dirt with your fists or a shovel and you just get dirt out of grass. Grass and dirt. <laughs> you end up getting, getting a lot of dirt in your time in Minecraft and I really wish it was possible to get grass earlier because so often you want to start a new area with grass and you or you want to fill a platform with grass that you can you can only bring dirt with you you know it's actually really useful to acquire grass grass is the only place where passive mobs like pigs and cows are going to spawn grass is the only thing that will allow you to grow additional like grass <laughs> long grass like this and flowers and things like that so it's actually quite useful to get hold of if you want to start a terraforming project project and you want grass to spread around and and eventually grass will spread back over dirt so all you really need is a couple of grass blocks to get yourself started but as i said you only get dirt if you harvest a grass block with a normal shovel however with a silk touch shovel you actually get a grass block to drop so silk touch is one of the only ways you can acquire grass blocks and other blocks like them. Now naturally there is a bit of a difference between having silk touch on a shovel versus having it on an axe or having it on a pick and it all comes down to which blocks these tools are capable of breaking. So for example like leaves or dirt, grass, whatever, it can all be broken with the fist. So for example, I can punch the leaves out of this tree using just my hand. And normally if they drop anything, they drop saplings or apples in the case of these oak trees. Now, if I use a silk touch shovel on these leaves, I actually get myself some leaves because that's effectively the same as using shears. It's using silk touch to acquire the block itself and not the items it drops. And because this is something that I can punch with my hand, I can use basically any tool on it that allows me to acquire the block itself without any other problems. Let's hop through to the nether for another really good example, which is glowstone, which of course requires me to not die to a ghast first. Ah, nailed it from a distance. Very, very good. So uh, how did I get back from here again? I can't remember. I can't remember the route back from this place. Ah, yes, of course, we can walk down the sides here. So let's take a look and see if there's any easily accessible glowstone around here. I think I might have already acquired most of it, but oh, there was a patch over there, wasn't there? Yes, let's go for that. Oh, and we got some ghast tears as well. Fantastic, great stuff. Yes, how many of those do we have? Two, nice. Okay, we'll take those back to the workshop. We will need those later. Uh, so glowstone up here is another one of the blocks that you can mine using any tool, including your hand. Oh, hello, there's a wither skeleton over here. We might as well take this guy out, seeing as he's stood on the boundaries of the nether fortress, although he's near some pigmen right now, so we probably need to back off and get some distance. And attack. 
Nice, okay, we got some coal, we got some bones, very good. So, take a look at this glowstone. This is another one of the blocks in the game that you can harvest using any tool or even your hand. But as we know, if you punch a block of glowstone until it breaks, you get glowstone dust from it. Whereas, if you harvest it with a silk touch tool, Again, you get the glowstone itself, which is actually great because normally when you break glowstone, it only drops between two and four glowstone dust and you need the entire four to be able to reassemble a block. So for the most part, it is usually a great idea to come here with a silk touch tool and get the glowstone blocks themselves because then even then, if you need to break them down into glowstone dust, you can always use a fortune tool on them to get as much glowstone dust as possible. And this way it's guaranteed that you will get a glowstone blocks so you won't need to reassemble them from glowstone dust you won't end up with an odd number or anything like that you're always going to get the glowstone block itself now by contrast for example we have netherrack all around us right now and netherrack is one of those blocks that can only be harvested using a pick so for example even if i'm using a silk touch shovel on the netherrack if I punch it like so with my shovel, it's just going to break and not drop anything. So Silk Touch does not mean you acquire the block no matter what. Silk Touch still relies on the rules that govern which blocks can be broken with which tools. And for example, if I wanted some Nether Quartz ore, like so, or any of the ore blocks in the game, any of the coal or diamond ore or emerald ore or anything like that, it is possible to get them without them breaking down into the stuff they drop, without breaking quartz or down into quartz, but you would need a silk touch pickaxe for that, rather than a silk touch tool of any other kind, or just using a normal pickaxe, because as we know, if you break it with a normal pickaxe, you will just end up getting the ore it drops. Now naturally that doesn't apply to gold ore or iron ore, because they drop as ore blocks to be smelted anyway, but the general idea is that if you want the block itself and not the stuff it drops, you need to be using silk touch on it. I've come back to our homestead at night and there's an enderman out there brilliant i might actually look directly at this guy and use my my shield tactics my combat strats to take care of him because i really really want an ender pearl yes oh we got two i think fantastic great stuff all right let's head into the house because it's time to start a very very important lesson in your minecraft progression and that is how to find a stronghold. Now let me just take care of this creeper first. I don't seem to have any bow, uh, some arrows on me right now, so we're gonna have to employ the back away strategy. There we go. Fantastic stuff. Getting so used to dealing with creepers out here because we haven't lit up the place in its entirety, which is probably something we will do in a future episode, but not worried about it right now. So let's walk up here and take a look at the other use for Eyes of Ender, which we have used in previous times to make an Ender chest. And in fact, since we have two Ender Pearls, I might make another Ender chest over here because that's a great demonstration of the stuff we covered in the previous episode about using an Ender chest to recover items over short uh, distances. For example, like if we pop an Ender chest down here, like so, even long distances as well. Don't know why I said short distances here. Right click on the Ender chest and anything I put in the Ender chest on this side will be available over there at the village and vice versa. So if I put anything over there in the Ender chest, it will end up in here. And I feel kind of silly that I haven't put something in the Ender chest to demonstrate it previously. But here we go. I'm going to go and sleep for a second. Oh, there's a spider climbing on my house. I think that's normally what happens when it says there are monsters nearby, unless there's something on the roof of the barn. Let's try moving the bed a little bit here. Should we try moving it to the front? Nope, looks like the spider is out here somewhere. Maybe I'll try this corner. Oh, no, there's a skeleton outside my window. Do you see that? <laughs> He's sneaking around and lurking out there. Let's try the front corner of the house. There we go. I got some sleep next to the map wall. Fair enough. So let's talk about Eyes of Ender and what they can be used for other than Ender chests, because this is, <laughs> this is quite a fun aspect of the game. It basically becomes a scavenger hunt for the stronghold itself. And what are strongholds, you ask? Strongholds are generated structures within the game, sort of like the abandoned mine shaft that we discovered earlier, but they are the place where you can find a portal to the last dimension in Minecraft, the end, which is a place we have not been yet because it requires a lot of searching and some eyes of ender in order to do so. What we're standing in right now, of course, is the overworld. We've already been to the nether and it's a similar situation with the end. You need to find a portal that will take you there and equip it with several eyes of ender, usually between nine and 12, because sometimes it has a few 
uh, Eyes of Ender in the portal already, but you will need a total of 12 Eyes of Ender fitted into the portal frame in order to get there. This is all going to make a lot more sense when I actually find the stronghold. And that is where Eyes of Ender come in, because these are actually a tool we can use to locate the stronghold itself. Now, the best way to use these is to get up to higher ground, preferably something where there's fewer trees and tall grass and stuff in the way, so you can have a good view of this thing. Because if you hold one of these in your hand and you right click, it will drift up into the air in the direction of the nearest stronghold. And there are several strongholds scattered throughout the world. This is, I think, true even if you're playing on older versions of Minecraft or console versions of Minecraft, you will still find that there are at least three strongholds in the world. I think unless you're playing on like the Xbox 360 version or the PS3 version of Minecraft where I think there's only one because the, the worlds are pretty small. So let's stand on top of this little hillock here. We're going to right click and see which way it goes. And we have to look very quickly because, yep, there it is. Okay, it's headed in this direction, which means that if we travel in this direction for probably a thousand or so blocks, we will be a lot closer to a stronghold. The way strongholds typically generate, there will be three strongholds in a kind of triangular formation a lot of the time between a thousand and two thousand blocks of your world's spawn point. Oh, hello, a bat has come to the surface. So yeah, this being the spawn point over here, we spawned in that field down there where we've built the houses and so forth. It's going to be probably about a thousand blocks or so, but well, maybe between, you know, 800 to a thousand uh, as a minimum before we can find the stronghold. So it's going to require traveling quite a distance in the direction that the Eye of Ender flew. And to be honest, with only one Eye of Ender, it might not be possible to make the trip entirely because there is a chance for these things to break when you throw them up into the air. So you're probably going to want to acquire a whole bunch of Eyes of Ender before you set out on this particular quest. And it's something I plan to do actually. If we uh, we go back to the house and get some blaze powder, we can at least fight some Endermen while we're on the way or maybe even trade for Ender Pearls with the villagers. Now where was the priest with all of the unlocked trades? Was it you? No, it wasn't you. Was it you? Yes, it was. Okay, fantastic. So six emeralds will get us an ender pearl. I think we can probably spend the rest of our emeralds on getting these because ender pearls are quite difficult to come across. <laughs> you saw how tricky it was to get rid of that enderman earlier and they, they spawn so infrequently, especially considering that I have been sleeping through the days a lot of the time here. So that will now get us four eyes of ender, which should be enough, hopefully, if we don't encounter them breaking too much. That should be enough to help us find the stronghold. Now, <laughs> to demonstrate, I'm gonna put the ender pearls in there just so you guys can have a solid idea of how ender chests work, so we can have a physical demonstration instead of me just talking about it. And when we open the chest on the other side, three ender pearls in exactly the same spot that I put them in the first ender chest. So like I said, these are shared inventories. Wherever you are in the game, whatever dimension you happen to be in, your ender chest will always contain the same stuff you put in it before. And the ender chest, interestingly enough, is another item that cannot be broken and acquired unless you have a silk touch pick. If I was to mine this with my regular pickaxe here, it would just turn back into obsidian and we'd lose the eye of ender from the middle, so you wouldn't be able to craft another ender chest unless you had a spare Eye of Ender. Something to keep in mind, Silk Touch pickaxes are required to pick up Ender chests and take them with you. So I've got myself three more Ender Pearls, I need two more Blaze Powder because I already have one here in my inventory, like so, and we've got ourselves four Eyes of Ender. That should be enough for the trip to the Stronghold. So I'm going to put some of the other stuff I've got here away. I don't think I should need to bring any potions like that or anything with me because this is going to be a trip through the overworld. So let's put some more of this stuff away and I will be back with you once I've finished doing my sorting here. All right, let's quickly take itinerary of what I'm going to bring with me. I'm going to bring some logs, some torches, and some coal so we can have light wherever we want to go and potentially craft some items if we need to craft stuff with the crafting table. We can make a fresh one out of those. I've got my eyes of ender with me. I've got my obsidian and flint and steel, 14 of that for a nether portal frame, just so we, when we encounter the stronghold itself, if we find it in this episode, we should be able to start a nether portal there, and that will allow us easy access to the stronghold whenever we want to return. I've also got some food. Plenty of food will be required for this trip because it's probably going to be a long one. I've got all of my tools, and some of them are in 
you know, worse states of repair, but we shouldn't need the axe too much on this trip. The important thing is to have a nice healthy shovel and pick because we might need to do a lot of digging in order to find the stronghold. It will be buried underground somewhere. I might bring a bed with me or I might just sleep here for the night because it's going to be, like I said, a long trek, but probably best to start it off when a new day begins so that we're not besieged by mobs on our journey there. And it might also be a good idea to bring some more blaze powder in case we want to find some endermen on the way and get myself some more eyes of ender either for the trip itself or for the end portal when we eventually find it. But I don't think we'll worry about that right now because as long as we've got a nether portal set up once we're there I think it should be nice and easy to return there at any time and fill up the portal with eyes of ender. Now what I tend to do whenever I'm searching for a stronghold is go about 500 blocks and then throw another eye of ender because that will generally tend to course correct you from where you uh, where you need to be and of course I've got the debug screen up I've got my f3 details up there so I can see exactly where we are in the world and see how far I've traveled. That's a very iron rich cave down there. So a lot of iron just hanging out on the surface. Might have to come back here later and get some more of that if we need it. But I think once we've climbed up to the top of this ridge, it might be a good idea to throw another ender pearl here because this is some nice open countryside. We've got a nice big lake down here. We should be able to see if we're still headed in the right direction. Ready for another throw and throw. Yep, looks like we're still headed in the right direction. Let's see if it breaks or if it drops. Okay, fantastic, it drops. So we get to keep that ender pearl, or that eye of ender rather, and let's, yeah, it's in, it's in a tree. Of course it is. Let's hop onto the tree and collect it. There we go. And it's times like this when I'm bobbing across a giant lake in the middle of nowhere that I really wish I'd put depth strider on my boots. Let's skirt around the edge of this hill. It seems like we are still headed in the right direction as long as we continue heading southward which is going to be this way. Let's see what we find. Wow, that was a huge spruce forest. <laughs> I'm only just coming out on the other side of it, and we've traveled probably seven, 800 blocks, something like that. And we are coming out onto the other side into a regular birch and oak forest. I think this seems like a good place to throw another Eye of Ender because we are nearly a thousand blocks south in the world now, south from zero at least. So let's throw it and see. Oh, where did that go? Okay, it still went in the same direction and it dropped. Fantastic. We get the ender pearl back. Eye of ender. I keep calling them ender pearls. Sometimes the terminology does get a little bit confusing and you'll find people talking about nether portals and end portals like they're the same thing. <laughs> Gets a little bit confusing for us sometimes, but no worries. Let's keep on going. Hello, wolves. I don't have any bones for you, unfortunately. I do have some steak, which is why they all looked at me quizzically, but I think for now we will leave those wolves be. And at this point, we are probably getting close to the point where we need to triangulate the position of the fortress by throwing a few more ender pearls and seeing which direction they go. But I think we'll get to this spruce forest over here. Not exactly keen on traveling through another spruce forest yet today. They're not exactly difficult terrain or anything like that, but it is just kind of nice to have some variety in our day. Let's hop over to the edge of this lake here and see what happens if we throw an ender pearl now. Okay, it is drifting, but it's drifting in a slightly different location. It's starting to go off to one side over here. Let's break the leaves of this tree to get our Eye of Ender back. Like so, fantastic. We've still got all four of them, which is actually a remarkably good thing. Oh, hello. <laughs> I was expecting this to be a ravine that went all the way down to the bottom of the world, because occasionally you can find your strongholds have generated in those. And it looks like the wolves over there have killed some sheep. <laughs> it turns out wolves actually have this kind of natural behavior where they will kill sheep if they find them in the wild. So it's uh, occasionally something you can stumble upon and turns out to be quite a good source of food if you don't feel like killing the sheep yourself. <laughs> a few sheep have died here and left us their mutton, so we will put that to good use, I'm sure. All right, this hill looks good. This hill looks like a prime place to be throwing an ender an eye of ender from so let's see which way it goes yep we're still kind of veering towards the west the southwest direction and oh brilliant we're still getting the ender pearl fantastic i i keep calling it an ender pearl i'm sorry guys <laughs> messing up my terminology here but i was certain we would lose one by this point hello and this creeper seems to think the same that's a nice ender pearl you've got there all right, uh, maybe we can make our way around this large plateau. This is pretty cool terrain, though. I like this a lot. This is the kind of terrain that everybody always says reminds them of beta terrain generation because of the, the extremeness of the landscape. These kind of taiga hills biomes and forest hills tend to be the thing. Now, I really should have crafted some arrows before I left. That was one thing that I 
didn't do that I'm kind of kicking myself for now because these creepers keep turning up and I've got no means for long range combat at all. Another quick throw from the top of this tree, we're out here by a massive ocean which seems to be the end of the land in every direction as far as I can tell and oh! That's now headed in a different direction. That's going southeast. Amazing stuff. Right, let's see if we can reacquire that. Let's use the wool that we got from those sheep to pillar up into this tree. And where did that go? Did that break on us? I think it might have broken. Did you see it drop? I don't think I saw it drop. Oh, no, there it is. Fantastic. Good. We still have it. Please don't tell me it's out in the ocean. I hate when strongholds spawn that way. It is occasionally possible for the portal room of a stronghold to spawn on its own in the middle of an ocean biome, but that is pretty rare as far as I'm concerned. Now, let's try throwing from here and see. Oh, now it's headed back that way. It's headed west. So this seems like a good place to start digging because it headed east from there. It headed west from here. Maybe we should use this cave as a base and start digging down. Seems like the best place to do it. But oh, if we've got an expansive cave system here already, then this might be a good opportunity to get as low down as we can without having to do too much digging. Oh, that zombie dropped a potato. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, let's see how low this cave goes because the strongholds themselves are usually quite expansive structures, which means if you stumble upon one in a cave, you are likely to find it relatively easily. And this goes down to about Y50 in this direction. I promise we will take the debug information off the screen sooner or later. This is just actually a really useful way of navigating your way around the world. But as you can tell, we are 1600 blocks out from zero, zero. So this is a... Oh, and that just leads straight back down to the place we've already explored. Well, that seems like the spot to start mining, doesn't it? Let's see if we can dig down in this sort of direction and see what we can find. Now, we're not guaranteed to run into it straight away. Of course, this is not an exact pinpoint of where the stronghold is. We could throw some more enderpearls around on the surface to triangulate its position more accurately. But with the subtitles on and with our wits about us and a lot of torches on our hotbar, we should hopefully be able to... Oh my gosh! Look at that. Once again, this series, I swear, I have not like found the location of this stronghold beforehand. I haven't been in spectator mode looking for it or anything like that. This is actually turning out fantastically. So right here, you'll notice we have some stone bricks of the mossy and cracked varieties, and that is what the stronghold is made out of. You'll find naturally spawned stone bricks underneath the surface in giant, giant formations. You'll find that a lot of the time these are huge rooms. And as we get into here, you'll notice this stretches out into a vast dungeon around and below us. We get the I Spy achievement. There you go. That's the uh, that's your proof that I have not been here before because I wouldn't have got that otherwise. And this is a stronghold. Now let's do a quick bit of exploring. Looks like this leads to a dead end. You'll find iron doors with buttons on the walls, which are kind of carefully concealed in a lot of these places. You might have to look closely if you can find those. And you'll find staircases down towards other parts of the stronghold and various other doors that you can step through. Now, these are going to be very unlit areas until you come through with torches, so there will be plenty of monsters in here, although the stronghold itself doesn't naturally spawn any monsters. It's, uh, it's just the case that overworld mobs will spawn in here in large numbers if the overworld above is nice and lit up. Or, oh, okay, we got some some branching pathways here. Yeah, or if the uh, if it's if it's daytime during your exploration of a stronghold, you will usually find that there are lots of overworld mobs around inside the dungeon because it's it's down here in the dark. Now these things don't have a specific layout; they are procedurally generated, much like a lot of other Minecraft terrains. So there isn't a specific route to follow through a stronghold in order to find the end portal room. That is something that you will probably just have to figure out on your own. It's different in each unique stronghold. So just pick a path, follow it, make sure you're placing torches as you go, both so you know which direction you've come and also so that the area stays lit up against more mob spawns. You will find that there are a lot of dead ends in these places, but a lot of places also lead to exciting, interesting rooms. And some places even where the caves that naturally generate as part of the terrain in your world will end up bisecting the stronghold like this. And that is often the case that it will uh, it will delete rooms <laughs> in a stronghold because, uh, yeah, there's, there's too much cave going on around them. Oh, hello. Looks like we've stumbled upo upon a chest. Fantastic. This stronghold is actually really large. This is larger than some of the ones I've seen for a while. So it's probably going to be a 
good bet to torch up most of this place and keep it safe. Let's pop down a couple of torches here. Let's see where any of the rest of this stuff is going. Wow, this place is pretty expansive. Okay, it looks like we're going to spend a couple of days exploring this. Now, we've got some more coal there. Fantastic. We've got a little bit of apples in case you want some food. I'll take the chest with me as well to spare me crafting those later. And if we hop down here, uh, these are usually the places where you find a lot of creepers and stuff spawning, so be careful. Yep, there we go. Look at that. There's a huge cave has bisected this. There's a skeleton down there. That looks like it's getting close to bedrock as well. Wow. Wow, this place is very, very large. But hopefully we should find some interesting stuff. There are a few things you're looking out for when you enter Strongholds. The main one, of course, is the portal room, which I've already mentioned. A place where you can put your Eyes of Ender and create a portal to the end. Another is a library, which you will find generating in Strongholds, usually in just ones or twos in a Stronghold. Oh, wow. Okay, that goes out into an ocean ravine, which may even be completely underground, but has magma blocks in the floor. Wow, okay. Not going to go that way, though. That's not part of the stronghold. That's just a uh, a fancy coincidence. But yeah, the, uh, the other thing you're looking for is libraries, and you'll get one or two of them in a stronghold sometimes, and they have tons of bookshelves. They have enchanted books in chests. Whoa, careful. And they have, uh, yeah, they have a whole bunch of loot that you can acquire. So it's usually pretty good to uh, to get hold of a library in a stronghold if you can find one. They are very, very useful if you're putting together an early enchanting setup and you don't have enough bookshelves. But if you know where a stronghold is, you can just grab all of the bookshelves from out of here because there are so many of them. Occasionally in corridors. Oh, I think I saw one through there. Yes, there's our library. We'll go there in a second, but I want to search this chest first. Occasionally you'll find these chests in the corridors, and sometimes they will even have Eyes of Ender or Ender Pearls, I think, in the chest with them. So you'll probably want to search those and break them once you've searched them so you know that you, uh, you aren't going to be faked out by that chest when you come through again. Right, let's head for that library and see what we can find over here, because maybe this might even be close to the portal room itself, I'm not certain. But hopefully we'll be able to find one in this episode. So this is the library, you'll find two chests in here, one on the upper level here in this corner, which is going to have, oh, aqua affinity, sharpness, and sharpness three with power four. Wow, fantastic stuff. And we will collect those in a minute, but I want to come down here, you'll find... A lot of cobwebs down here as well, so I'm going to get stuck in all of those, apparently. Let's break one of those. And I think another one of the chests should be found on one of these bookshelves. On the top side of the bookshelf, depends which way around the library has generated, I think. So we might find it over here. Let's see. Yes, over here. Fantastic. Oh, that's just got some regular books in it. Well, that's good. We can bring those books with us. And, of course, you can break down all of the bookshelves in this library for books, or you can bring them back to your place as bookshelves if you have a Silk Touch tool. For example, I don't have my Silk Touch a shovel with me, but if we broke these with a Silk Touch axe, and the axe is probably the best thing for dismantling bookshelves, it's going to do it the fastest anyway, you will be able to break all these bookshelves as actual bookshelf blocks to save them breaking down into books, and you'll be able to take those with you. But we are going to leave the library alone for right now because I do want to try and find the portal room before this ends. And I'll give you guys the coordinates of the portal if you happen to be using this world for yourself. I'll give you the coordinates of the library as well so you can just dig straight down into it. Give me one second to hop up here. And that is at minus 76, 35, 16, 84. Knock yourselves out. Go find some books. <laughs> Read a book. All right, let's see if we can find the portal room before we wrap up this episode. Shouldn't be too difficult to find. There are a few places that I haven't gone already. Often you will find that they are deeper in the world, so you'll find them at the bottom of these staircases. But that one just leads to a dead end. And if it seems like your stronghold leads to a dead end in a number of places, you might want to knock through the walls like I just did, because oftentimes there are actually things beyond the wall. It's just that the stronghold is generated kind of weirdly, or a cave has bisected it and the cave wall has taken over from the stronghold generation or something like that. So you may even find that there are some things to discover beyond the walls of where you've originally been. And here we go. We have found the portal room at long last. And with it, we have found the silverfish spawner. This is one of the only mob spawners that doesn't occur in a normal dungeon or in a nether fortress. This silverfish spawner is the first thing I normally light up <laughs> as soon as I get into this room because I really dislike silverfish. They're one of my least favorite mobs. And I think we may even have encountered them in this series already if we've come across an extreme hills to mine in. But this right here is a spawner that will get 
a ton of silverfish spawned around you, and amazingly, we haven't encountered any of them in the walls of the stronghold already, but many of these stone bricks here are infested with silverfish eggs. So, oh gosh, they're still spawning. Let me get rid of these guys for a second. Silverfish are naturally going to be a problem down here, and they will actually wake up any silverfish that spawn in blocks around you if they take any damage but don't instantly die. So instantly dying is definitely the best thing to happen to a silverfish, and especially with all this lava around, you need to be extra careful that you don't get knocked into the lava. So I'm actually going to block that lava up. I'm going to put some stone bricks above it like so, so that we don't end up walking into that. At least it lights the room up a little bit, so we should be able to get out of the way here. There we go. And finally, there's a, a pool of lava underneath the end portal itself, and that is <laughs> something you don't want to be jumping into right away. So how about we just flood that out with water, like so, do that nice and carefully. Oh, okay, we are just going to remove all the torches in the surrounding area. Fine, that's fine, that's not a problem. We'll pop all of the torches back down and pop one in the middle there as well, and hopefully this room should be oh, relatively spawn-proof, although silverfish will just find ways to spawn here all the time anyway. Yep, and there you go. See, we're breaking blocks, we're waking the rest of the silverfish up. That's really annoying, especially if it means that the lava out here ends up pouring into the room because several silverfish could be inside any of these blocks. Now, as for the end portal itself, it has one Eye of Ender already set into the frame, so if we can pop down a few more of these, just look at the block and right click, but be careful not to look away from the block, otherwise you'll end up throwing your Eyes of Ender and that's not what you want. Now these end portal frames are unbreakable blocks. Even with the best pickaxe in the world, with a haste enchantment and silk touch and anything you might want to name, you will not be able to pick these up and take them with you. They are fixed in this location, which is one of the reasons why it's important to build a nether portal here, because you will want to come back to the stronghold and visit the end portal quite regularly. So to finish off this episode, I'm going to take a few steps back here and I'm going to build an end portal into the wall over here by the stronghold, as long as the silverfish don't cause me too much trouble. So let's see if we can at least hollow out a decent space here without them messing with me too much. You know what, I'll probably just put a block here and a block there so that they don't come through. At the very least, they will end up being trapped there in the blocks. Right, let's make a decent size portal frame. We need 12 blocks for this one if we're going to be making it a 3x3, which I like to do because the corridors in here are 3x3, so it kind of makes sense. So we'll need 12 blocks of obsidian for that. Let's pop that in a portal frame around there and let's light it up with our flint and steel, take the coordinates and make sure we know where we're coming out in the nether. And on the nether side, it seems to have generated a portal that was not already connected to our nether hub, which is, I think, possibly the first time that's happened and could also be quite a good thing because it means we have a demonstration of how to link up another portal that is completely separate from the portals we've already had and it means a slightly easier time linking it. If I walk back through this portal now we should just end up back in the stronghold and so it's automatically linked without us having to build a corresponding portal in the nether. Fantastic. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. We have gone on quite a while here looking for this stronghold, and I think that's going to be everything. We might not go to the end in the next couple of episodes. I do want to do a few things in the overworld here before we go and fight the dragon, but we are getting ever closer to that, my friends, and finding the stronghold is definitely the next step for that. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.